And I've got to say, I'm feeling pretty good about this week. As luck would have it, I was on Dunedin. Right. Oh, well done. You're back to win mate. No, 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 no. I said I was on it. Literally, yeah. I had to ride him down to Melbourne because there were only bloody Qantas flights, were there? Oh, yes. What a week it was for Qantas CEO Alan Joyce. Uh, let's have a look at him. It's the face that stopped a nation. <laughs> and uh, as you can see from this photo, he's now the only person in the world who's still happy to fly Qantas. Yeah. Yeah. But let's just walk you through the crisis step by step. As far as I can make out, Alan Joyce is blaming the whole dispute on the tree union. Tree union? Oh yeah, the tree unions. He's furious with the tree unions. By leaders of tree unions. See? Oh, oh, the, tree. the logging industry, oh. I knew it! <laughs> At least Alan Joyce, though, to be fair, was honest when he explained who the Qantas staff were locked out by. A one turd of the Qantas workforce. Oh, you're not just one turd, Alan. You're the top turd! <laughs> not since Ray Fiennes has someone screwed Qantas workers so spectacularly. But uh, he needed to act because according to Alan Joyce, Qantas is losing money. I mean, this year alone, its profit, it only went up to half a billion dollars, the poor thing. So Qantas management is now understandably keen to cut costs by moving jobs offshore into Asia. And I've got to say, I can see the logic of that. I mean, surely Qantas could at least find a cheaper CEO somewhere in Asia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, the unions, on the other hand, they say safety could be compromised by moving jobs offshore. And look, they've got a good point. I mean, the last time Qantas hired a foreign pilot, the results were terrible. This is your captain speaking. <laughs> Still getting over that. But uh, it's the it's the Qantas children's choir I feel most sorry for. They all face job lockouts too, mm. which is a devastating result for them. And an even worse result when you see who their replacement is. I take it you'd like me to sing. No! <laughs> now, look, this decision by uh, Alan Joyce on Saturday night to ground the entire fleet was seen by most as a pretty extreme measure. But according to Channel 9, Simon Boda, it wasn't as extreme as it could have been. Now, planes that are currently in the air will complete their sectors. That's right, they could have shot them down! Yeah. <laughs> Small mercies! <laughs> yeah. The grounding decision left Qantas passengers stranded, and as uh, Nick Marshall McCormack from Channel 7 said, most passengers are extremely furious. Mm. Oh yeah, they were furious. Oh, no. Here is just a sample of the extreme fury that he felt. We're annoyed. <laughs> so we're going to be stuck in Brisbane for my birthday, which is cool. Well, personally, I think I wish I bought a Qantas because I don't really want to go home. Oh! Feel the fury! <laughs> of course, while many were left angry, uh, Greens campaigners like Al Gore actually praised Alan Joyce for doing more than any other CEO airline, uh, airline CEO to reduce carbon emissions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since the grounding, I've found it incredibly hard to stay carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. Like, I was supposed to fly to Perth, but because the flight was cancelled, I've now got so many carbon credits. But I had to run down five whole trees with my four drive just to stay oh, carbon no, neutral. No, no, no. Look, you, you had it easy. I mean, I was literally on the tarmac about to take off when word came through of the grounding. The problem was I'd already taken my sleeping pill, oh, so, no. as I do. So when I had to head back into the terminal, I mean, I was completely zonked out of it. I didn't know where I was. It was, it was a total embarrassment. <laughs> Look, as the chaos worsened, uh, Julia Gillard, of course, sent the dispute for an emergency hearing to Fair Work Australia, although Qantas were actually pushing to have it heard at Fair Work Vietnam. Yes. And the ABC's Hilly Ewart seemed to think the hearing was going to take place at Fair Work Siberia. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it was a huge media story, though, and, you know, good on the ABC for having reporters on the spot absolutely everywhere. Reporter Kylie Simmons is outside Fair Work Australia. Kylie, bring us up to date. Well, after five hours, there's still no decision yet. Now, you notice Kylie doesn't seem to have a lot of information there, and I think that might be because she was standing outside Fair Work Australia in Sydney while the hearing was taking place in Melbourne. Oh. <laughs> to be fair, she couldn't get a flight there. Oh, yeah, fair enough. And I'm taking... For decades, Qantas has had a safety record second to none, but its decision to leap into new markets in Asia left furious Qantas workers no option but to strike. Everyone from baggage handlers to pilots say that the move into Asia is symptomatic of a wider trend of the airline towards belt tightening, which they believe increases the likelihood of a crash. Some say the flying kangaroo's fight with the union is reminiscent of how Peter Reith intimidated workers on the waterfront. They say Qantas boss Alan Joyce is nothing but a top end of town fat cat, especially since he accepted a pay rise 
while trying to exterminate onshore jobs. Labour strongman Graham Richardson says Joyce's decision to ground the entire fleet not only left thousands of passengers stranded, but also sent Qantas's credibility into free fall. He says that unless the airline promises to keep their planes in the air, then there's every chance the patience of passengers will completely run out.